Welcome to our five on five. We're pleased to be joined by Scott Perry, the superintendent of the Southern Oregon Education Service District. Scott, good to see you again. How are you? Good to be here. Thanks. Appreciate it. So tell us, uh, Southern Oregon Success, what exactly is this program? Southern Oregon Success is really a, a coming together of multiple agencies, school districts, higher education partners, uh, the Job Council. Uh, we've been working at this for really over a year and a half. Um, uh, pulling people together, uh, really focused on, you know, the governor's goal for education, 40-40-20. 40 percent of students will get a four-year degree uh, after high school. Uh, Forty percent will get a, at least a two-year degree or some kind of a certificate. And the remaining 20 will at least graduate from high school, hopefully with work-ready skills. Mm -hmm. um, there's just this recognition that in today's economy and the economy of tomorrow, Students are going to have to have more than a high school diploma in order to really get uh, uh, the, the kind of job that will pay a living wage. And so we're taking that goal to heart and mm -hmm. we're saying that's got to be more than just the schools. We've got to have all the agencies that interact with families, um, all the, the different youth support groups that interact with families and, and students. And we also have to have our higher education partners, Southern Oregon University, Rogue Community College, Klamath Community College, uh, Oregon Tech over in Klamath Falls. Uh, we've got to have all these folks working together with us and create a system that really encourages students to both graduate and go, go on beyond graduation and go into post-secondary. Southern Oregon Success is actually a, what we call a P20 initiative in that we've also got kind of a wing of the Southern Oregon Success Group working on early learning. Mm. So we're working on uh, programs for very young children, uh, working on ways that we can support students in the K-12 arena, as well as what I just talked about, and that is the, the transition from students from, from, from high school to uh, post-secondary. And by post-secondary, I'm not just referring to college. It could also okay. be of uh, an apprenticeship in, a, okay. in a, a work setting, but some kind of a education after high school. And we're yeah. working to just really create a culture in Southern Oregon where everybody knows that that's where students are headed. That's All the, the students goal. know and that that diploma is just a, uh, it's, a it's an important milestone, but it's not an end point. They've, they really need to be educated beyond that. Very good, all right, we're gonna take a quick break. Much more with Scott in a moment, stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Scott Perry from Southern Oregon ESD talking about the program Southern Oregon Success. Uh, you guys had an, uh, an event last week. Tell us about what you did. We did. Uh, for the past seven months, uh, we, members of the Southern Oregon Success team, multiple community groups that have kind of come together, mm -hmm. uh, we realized that we really need to understand what each of our high, school is, high schools are doing to promote uh, post-secondary involvement on the part of students. So we went out and actually interviewed every single high school in Josephine, Jackson, and Klamath County. I spent a couple hours interviewing their administrators and counselors to identify what does that, what do those schools do that promote uh, post-secondary involvement with students? Do they do job shadows? Do they do uh, mock interviews? Do they uh, offer c college credit at the high school level? Yeah. Because we know if students get some college credit at the high school level, they're much more likely to continue on to college. Mm. So what are they doing? And what are the common, or what are the, 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 the strengths that they have? And then what are the common challenges? And we're asking the question, if we look at common challenges, what can we do as a region to help overcome those challenges? and uh, kind of support our high schools yeah. as they're working with students in this area. Wow, very good. Okay, now uh, a little, little off topic, certainly from Southern Oregon Success, I did want to ask you about, uh, we, we had quite a snowstorm uh, here in Southern Oregon yes, er we earlier did. this month. Uh, and I know it's up to, as, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, it's up to individual districts on how they uh, handle snow days and, and extending the school year. Is, that, uh, is, there, is there a cut and dried rule as that goes? There's really not a cut and dried rule. Every district has their own, uh, they, they develop their own calendars. And typically a school district will build in some days in their calendar that, that could either be used in, in for, for, to make up a snow day mm -hmm. or for a parent-teacher conference day. or They've got some flexible days okay. so that as the year unfolds, they're able to make decisions about how days will be used. 
Um, sometimes the school may need to add some days at the end of the year, um, but every district is different, yeah. and so parents will will hear from their district. They'll, they yeah. should be getting communication about whether or not a snow day will need to be made up, uh, uh, and then how they're going to proceed with that. Very good, Scott. We appreciate you coming by. Good to see you. Good to be here. All right. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back.